The Live View functionality in Shutterstream product photography software is designed to enable users to create high quality images regardless of experience. It is a tool that can be used for image composition to kind of pre-compose, adjust camera settings and just optimal imaging conditions. So what we're going to do first and foremost is left click on the Live View button and that will stream a real-time preview of what our camera is seeing. Next, I will go ahead and place an object in front of my camera. And as you can see on the screen, you can see my hand placing my subject. Now, while in Live View, we're going to have a bunch of different options. Um, first and foremost, I will just briefly touch on our camera control. We are compatible with a long list of camera uh, cameras from Nikon, Canon and Sony and this list is always updating so if you have a question about is your camera compatible feel free to reach out and uh, we can let you know. Now uh, our camera again is connected via USB uh, that's we're seeing obviously the real-time preview on the screen here. Uh, users do have full control over their camera settings uh, that is for instance aperture or shutter speed or ISO or white balance. They can optimize their camera settings for their lighting environment Nice thing about within the live view is we've built an exposure simulation. That is when I make a change, you can see the actual result in real time. Now, not every camera supports uh, exposure simulation, um, but the majority of cameras that we work with do. So again, the thing about that was as you make a camera change, you're going to see the result in real time before you've actually captured the image. Uh, the other thing that you can do inside of the software is users will have full control while in the live view mode to adjust their focal point near and far. Um, users can choose to shoot in autofocus or manual focus mode. And uh, should users wish to manually adjust a focal point and set a focal point, they can right click on the live view window. That will adjust the one to one viewfinder area. I will choose to zoom in. And from here, what I can do through mouse clicks is drive my lens near and far to select my focal point. And as we can see, it just brought everything back into focus. And we will revert back to kind of the standard one-to-one -one view. So that is one benefit of live view is being able to see everything before we've started to kind of capture the image. Uh, we can take this one step further and let me just close my camera settings window. We'll go into the control turntable window and if we go one step further, what we're going to see here is there's a big benefit when shooting 360 product photography because we can go ahead and preview the rotation of our turntable to ensure that our object is in the center of the turntable and even take this one step further. Users can also say only take a picture of what's inside this pre-cropped area so they're not cropping after the fact. So again, that's uh, live view is going to be kind of the central command for when... Uh, you know kind of composing your images so let me just exit out of our turntable controller and we will dive into our live view options here so as you probably saw there i did define a crop um, when i hit snap it's going to capture an image and only take a picture of what's inside that crop area and we can see a good looking quality image there now if i hit live view again we're gonna dive into our live view options. And if I just click these three little dot icons, we're gonna see here, we've got some options. First and foremost is our display lines. And as we can see the blue and the red lines overlaid over top of the live view window. Users do have full control to customize the number of lines and also the color of lines. These are just beneficial when placing your object to help kind of ensure that your object is placed in the center of the viewfinder. Um, Second thing users can do is a live view rotation. Maybe you're shooting with your camera at a different orientation. Maybe it's you know flipped up shooting uh, kind of horizontally instead of landscape mode. Um, you can compensate for your live view through live view rotation. Um, users can also adjust their camera's live view resize. As you can see, we have a slide bar here. Uh, some of the cameras that we do support go all the way back to about 2008. Uh, the technology back then was not as good. Uh, more specifically with the live view uh, being a very small resolution. So for instance, I know a couple older Nikon camera um, have uh, live view window sizes that are about 480 pixels wide. And they might look something like this, what you see on the screen here. We give users the ability through camera live view resize to adjust that live view resize. And they can always revert it back to a one-to-one -one, kind of the, the fit view, kind of the standard resolution. 
Uh, the next thing that we see here is a modeling mode. Uh, users who are working with strobes, we do give you the ability to set a different um, basic camera setting for the live view versus once you actually capture and snap your image. Obviously, if you're working with strobes, your live view is going to look a little bit dark. So we allow you to compensate for that and say, this is the settings I'd like to use for my live view. And then when I take a picture, I'd like to use this setting. So that's our modeling mode. A um, few different other features here. Keep live view on after capture. If you recall, when I hit snap, it automatically showed the image after capture. What I will do here is say keep live view on after capture. This is kind of a workflow tool. Let me just crop this image here just to communicate. So I will hit snap. You're going to see the image is captured into the thumbnail gallery and it stays in the live view mode. So if I did want to maybe take two different two different pictures of my subject, we can go ahead and just hit snap again and it will revert back to live view every single time instead of showing us the images that we just captured. Now going back to our live view options, we will say you can auto select images after capture. Uh, images are going to be processed after whether that's you know editing your images or removing the backgrounds or transferring images or in the case of 360 product photography creating a 360 product view um, users will want to select their images and then choose the image processing tool on the right hand side uh, users can say auto select an image after capture and that will auto select it immediately after the image is captured and uh, the last feature here is pre-name images let me just enable that here and you're going to see something different happens when i hit snap we're going to see a a feature come up for master naming so we have a lot of customers who use barcode scanners and they need to pre-name their 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 images before they've actually captured them uh, as part of their workflow so what a user could do here is use their barcode scanner scan it into this placeholder here and go ahead and hit ok and after they've named their image we're gonna hit ok there you're gonna see that image is renamed with the number or the name that we'd put in there and uh, automatically kind of displayed. So that's our live view feature in a nutshell. Um, it is a very critical part of the software. It will make your life a lot easier. Kind of what you see is what you get before you've captured. And it really just enables users of any skill level to understand um, you know, how things are, are gonna look before they've captured an image again, saving a lot of time and effort and just kind of making it easy for users as well. Uh, that's our live view feature. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out directly to us. Thank you.